In this video, we're going to go over the computations for our three measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and mode. So I'm just going to start out by generating some sample data here. So we're going to say uh, 6, 5, 4, uh, we'll do like 10 numbers or so, 1, 7, 8, 3, 3, 2, 3. So we'll start with the mean. I want to remind you of the formulas for the mean here. We have two, depending on which mean you're referring to, that of the population or that of the sample. So if we're trying to calculate a population mean, we're using mu. This just means the population mean, just a symbol to kind of represent that. And then we have this value mu equals sigma x sub i. I'll talk about this subscript i a little bit more in this video, divided by capital N just the number of people in the population, the number of values in total. Now if we're doing a sample mean, x bar, it's gonna look very similar, except in the denominator we're gonna have sample size, little n, instead of population size, big N. So I wanna go over, uh, like I said, the index number to really start us out here. So let's go ahead and kind of uh, figure out what our index numbers are. So an index number literally just means you're numbering off all the different values. So I can create a row here. If you can see that, this is i, just the same i as over here, standing for kind of index or each individual. So I can number everyone off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this is first of all a great way of now knowing that we have 10 different people in our sample. Let's just pretend that this is a sample here because uh, populations will typically be much, much larger. So that helps us, but also it helps for referring to things. Like I said before, subscripts and notation, uh, they're going to become very important as we get more complex. But I can say, for example, so here are all of our x values and here are our index numbers. So now I can say, what is x4? x sub 4. Well, you just look at the index number, 1, 2, 3, 4. The x value is 1. So it actually equals 1. How about x5? Well, that's going to equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be 7. And so on. So it's a great way of kind of notating things. And I can also do more complex things, like how about x sub 3 times 2 or something, right? So we can look at what x sub 3 is. That's going to be 4 times 2 is going to be Eight. So again, this becomes really helpful as we get more complex moving forward. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the sample mean. Again, pretending this is sample data here. So let's take care of that numerator because the denominator is going to be very easy. Sigma x sub i. This literally just means take the sum of each x value, all the index numbers, x1 through x10. So if I do that, it's going to look like this. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus all the way to x10. Hopefully you kind of get the idea there. So it's going to look like this. 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 1 plus 7 plus 8 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 and plus 3. And if we do this, we're going to end up getting 42. So here we have our numerator. Simple as that, 42. And since we already counted out our index numbers, we also already have our denominator. Our sample size, the number of scores in our sample, is simply 10. And so now this becomes a very simple computation, 42 divided by 10. So our sample mean equals 4.2. But I want to reiterate that, you know, if you were to use the population formula here, you would still get 4.2. But that won't always be the case. So in addition to you know, just making it clear what we're referring to, a population or a sample, it's also important to use the right formula because when we get to other types of computations, the values you'll get might be slightly different based on whether you're looking at a population or a sample. Okay, so we have our mean, that's x bar, and that equals 4.2, and that is our mean. So now we need the median and the mode. So these are much easier to compute. Oftentimes you can kind of figure out just by looking at things and there's no you know, real computations involved per se. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff we already kind of computed and let's do the median and then the mode. So as we talked about before, the median is simply the middlemost score. You're going to notice here very quickly, though, that we have two middle scores. Because we have an even number of values, there's going to be two in the middle. But 
Before we get ahead of ourselves, the first step is always to order our numbers. One, two, three, three, three. You can kind of already guess what the mode is. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now we have to figure out what the middle is. So we got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. These two values here are the middle. So I can go ahead and circle them. So in a case like this, when you have an even number of values in the set, you're gonna have to take the average of the two middlemost values. So you're gonna get three plus four over two, and this is gonna come out to 3.5. So our median is 3.5, and the mode, once again, is just the most common value. I also encourage you to lay out the numbers in order when you're calculating the mode, because it makes it really easy to see that this is the mode. Three is the most commonly occurring value, so three is the mode. And that's our three measures of central tendency.